Hey, what's up crew? It's Wyatt with the Coon Homestead. And today I'm gonna to be making an old French classic with my own little twist on it. Cocovine or chicken and wine used to be considered a poor man's food back in the day because it's fairly inexpensive and you can kind of mix and match some of the ingredients and make it a little unique. So today we'll be walking through that process together. So let's discover together. So we're gonna start off by blanching our pearl onions. Pearl onions are pretty tough to process and to peel, so an easy cheat code is to blanch them real quick. Blanching is just a way of quickly cooking a vegetable in order to soften them up a bit, and then shocking them in ice water afterwards to stop the cooking process immediately. Now for prepping the pearl onions, I just cut off the top, peel the sides off. You're gonna have a little bit of loss and then just cut the little bottom off. So Cornish hens are small birds, so I wanted to do four of them so that way I could have enough in the big pot. And I'm gonna start off here by skinning them. Uh, you just gotta unzip them because that skin, once it cooks, is going to turn kind of mushy. So afterwards to break them down now, you want to find that keel bone in the very center and cut the breast meat off of the keel bone. And you're going to kind of follow the sternum or rib cage all the way down and you notice here that there are two parts. There's the tenders and the breasts. The tender kind of is lodged in the center of the breast. There's two different cuts of meat. The thighs, you can kind of see the difference in where the the thigh muscle meets their back. You want to kind of cut down that line of the muscle until you hit the joint. Now at the joint, you're going to kind of want to feel where it bends and you can either cut right through or you can bend it all the way backwards and then cut the tendon or ligament that sits inside. So now we cut the wings off. We do the same thing with the joints and find right where it bends and then we just cut through. We're not quite done yet. Still want to remove the drumstick from the thigh. You can tell where the joint is by feeling it again. And also you can visually see where the two muscles intersect. And that will show you the line that you're gonna to want to cut through. And again, once you get to that joint, you just pull the joint back and then cut right through that tendon. So this is what a bird looks like broken down. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna cook the dark meat and we're going to put the wings and all of the carcasses and skin in a bowl and set aside for stock, which will be in a, a future video here. So now we're gonna lollipop the legs. So lollipop and legs just wanna cut a little bit of that meat off of the bottom um, of the drumstick. And then you're gonna wanna kinda pull it back up to the knuckle and grab a knife and crush right through that bone. So notice there are two legs in there that we didn't lollipop. That's because they were broken when they came with the birds. So probably through the butchering process they got, they got broken. So the reason that we dredge our chicken before we fry it is to help out that Maillard browning. And I'm gonna have an article coming out on the website about how that works and science behind it, but we're just changing the chemistry here. So now we're making something called a sachet garni, which is, you can kind of think of it as a tea bag for all the aromatics. So that way you don't have random aromatics floating around in your coca bean. It's easier to pull out. And it's just a piece of a leek with some parsley stalks in it and some thyme and bay leaves and a cinnamon stick, and then a star anise, 
and then a peppercorn medley and some cloves. Then we wrap it all up nice and then we tie it closed with some butcher twine to make sure it doesn't fall open and spill all the contents. So taking a look at our maize and plies here, all the ingredients, we've got pearl onion, shiitake mushroom, chopped parsley, garlic, sachet garni, and then our chickens, which is dredged. And then we also have some, some skin carrots that we're gonna glaze. Now we just want to sear the chicken. We do not want to cook the chicken all the way through. The chicken is going to braise. So now we're going to add the cooking wine. Cocoa bean is cooked in red wine. I don't speak French, but I think vin means red wine. But traditionally a Pinot Noir is used. And how much wine do you put in? Well, something I heard another chef say before is you want to put almost all the bottle in, but save enough for one glass. So we're going to go ahead and let the wine reduce, and that's going to cook off the alcohol as well as concentrate the wine a little bit more. And after that's done, throw in the stock. So I've had the chicken stock on the heat for a little while now in order to reduce the chicken stock a little bit and keep it warm so it doesn't shock the temperature when I add it. Now this entire thing only needs to be at a low simmer for about an hour. So towards the end of that, we're gonna go ahead and get our carrots ready. All right guys, that's it. Simple, nutritious, and delicious. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen while I cook, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to give me a thumbs up and a comment and a share, it helps a lot. And until next time, let's keep preparing today for a better tomorrow.